we'll get to all of them and we'll go back and deal with them here. But verse 1 says, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the work will finish from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. Again he limited a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, for if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not have afterward have spoken of another day. Now remember, as the recaps we've been going through, what is Hebrews? It is considered the better book. Not that it's better than any other book. In the Word of God, or what the Word of God is one book in whole, but it is talking about Jesus and His exalted position and really pointing out that everything is better. Now, what we have here in verse number 1 through 8, basically, there is a better rest for the believer of which God's creation rest is the type. Now, in verse 1 and 2, we have another warning and that is, we must believe God, have faith in what He says. Now, I'm not going to get in a hurry in these couple of verses here and just go through them. I want us to dissect this word, if you will, this morning and look at these things. Now, uh, faith is mentioned a lot of times in the Word of God, and we'll see that momentarily, of how many times it's mentioned just in the New Testament. Now, I think God has a lot to say about faith because He knew we was going to struggle with our faith so very much. Now from the pulpit to the pew, we all struggle with our faith. And this warning here, now we've had warnings. What do we have in chapter 2 and verse number 1? Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed. And then we saw last week about how uh, there was a, another warning given to us in chapter 3 about the unbelief. Now here again in chapter 4 and verse 1, let us therefore fear. Uh, one thing that's definitely lacking in our world today mm -hmm. is fear of Almighty God. I, we take God so lightly, <clears throat> take His Word so lightly, we as a country... And we as a world, we as a people, are doing everything we can do to put God out of our society. Uh, I know it ain't, you may think it's a broken record, and I'm not telling you nothing you don't already know. But I'm here to tell you, there is a war waged on God's Word. There is a war waged on God. People don't like to think of it that way, but that's simply what it is. And I believe... As God opens our eyes, He shows us that more and more. Here's a, discern, a great warning to us. Let us therefore, again, what is the therefore? Therefore, I'm going to continually repeat that. It is therefore what we have read, what we saw last week in chapter 3, about them not entering into the rest, how their carcasses fell in the wilderness. In the 40 years they wondered why, because of their unbelief, verse 19 of chapter 3 says, So we see they could not enter in because of unbelief. So let us therefore, as we have this knowledge, as we have this uh, thing that is prior written, you remember what is it, Romans uh, 15 verse 4, the things that are written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through the patience of the scriptures might have hope. So... These things are written for our learning. Let us therefore fear. And of course, you know the word fear. I mean, the, the Greek in it is simple. Let us be afraid. Let us be seized with alarm. 
Let us be captivated with alarm. I think if we was serious and had a real fear of God, it'd clean our lives up a lot. And, I, and I'm telling you, that goes for everybody. And again, from the pulpit to the pew, does not matter. Uh, the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge, beginning of wisdom. There is a fear, and we're losing that fear in our society. If you remember from the end of Genesis to the start of Exodus, what does the Word of God tell us? They arose a generation that knew not Joseph. Mm -hmm. Joseph is what? A type of Christ. Mm -hmm. He was the Savior of the people. <laughs> God gave him uh, the visions, took him from the, the, uh, the pit to the palace, if you will. So, but there arose a generation that lost that. Mm -hmm. We have a generation now that's coming up. Any of you that teach school, any of you that deal with youth, any of you that have youth, <laughs> doesn't matter. I'm telling you, you can see it everywhere. Mm -hmm. right. All you got to do is turn on your TV. All you got to do is get out in this world and see the assault that's against the Word of God. We ought to fear. We ought to have that reverential fear of God. Now watch this. We ought to fear this warning lest a promise being left us of entering into His rest. Being left us speaks of those who sail by past a place without stopping. That's basically what that means, being left us. It's like you just go right on past the place where you're supposed to be without stopping. And he said, lest a promise being left us. In other words, the promise, what promises he's talking about in context here, the rest for the people of God, the rest that's in Christ. So he said, any of you, so that any of you should seem to come short of it. That means to come too late or too tardily, if you will, to be left behind in the race and so fail to reach the goal to fall short of the end. Now see, I believe God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. And I believe we're close to God as we want to be, as we want to be, and I believe also that there's things that God has planned for us in our life that we're just simply too scared to step out and do it. Mm -hmm. I can speak for myself on that. I know what God's told me to do in some things. and uh, uh, Matter of fact, it's, it, it totally uh, involved a career change. That's scary. Mm -hmm. Been doing this stuff for 27 years. He don't just jump out and stop doing that. But I know what God has told me to do. <laughs> and I need to be about doing that. God has told you to do some things, no doubt about it. But you see, I think most of our problem, and I'm going to kind of wander off the context here in just a moment, but I think one of our problems is we are so in debt that we are enslaved mm -hmm. to be able to do the will of God in our life. Amen. That Amen. is our major right. problem. The Bible teaches us that debt that the uh, borrower is slave to the lender so long as he liveth. Yeah. We have nobody has forced us to go sign those papers. We've done it on our own. We can say, why has God let us do that? God, hey, listen. 95% of the stuff we got, we didn't pray about and seek God's will. Mm -hmm. We just thought things was going fine and we're going to go on and do it. And we still do it. Ain't a lot changed, amen. amen. But you think about that. We are in bondage and we cannot serve God like we ought to because of debt. And again, I, I'm just going to say it. I worry about our kids and our grandkids. Yeah. They will never be able to pay this debt back that we are leaving to them in our society, in our country. And I'm not going to get up here and get on a bunch of politics, but I'm just going to tell you we are doing wrong. Amen. Our kids and grandkids ain't going to be able to pay this back, yet we want them to do more and yeah. more and more. Sooner or later, we're going to be called on our bluff. Sooner or later, our debtors that we're indebted to is going to say, pay up. Yep. Well, 
God even speaks to all of that. So everything's just set up. You know, I mentioned last week about the chip being implanted in people and being implanted in our pets. I didn't even think about it. Right here's a chip we all got on our side. Yep. You know, there's a GPS technology on this phone. Mm -hmm. You know, I can take, get somebody else, and, and I know you can do it on the iPhone, I guess you can do it on the Droid, but you can be talking to them and have it on speaker and watch where they're going down the highway. Yes, sir. Sure can. Sit down and watch. Uh, they, the technology's there. How is everybody going to see the two witnesses that's going to be uh, slain in the streets of Jerusalem. Right there. Right there. You know, I've been in some of the remotest parts of this world, and they still have cell phones. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, everything is just set up. We just need to do, we just need to fear God. Amen. Amen. We need to serve Him. We're about doing what He says. But back in our context, I chased that little rabbit, and I won't charge you nothing for that. <laughs> but in verse 2, I bet somebody said, praise God, move on. But verse number 2, we see that we have the same gospel. Now notice this. Now he said, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as to them. You see, God's word hasn't changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament. What was the Old Testament? The Savior's coming. The redeemed's coming. The Lamb's coming. We look back to the finished work. Hebrews tells us that, and we'll deal with that as we get on later in there. But the same gospel, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Adam and Eve, when they was done, what uh, sinning, what God do? He slain an animal, slain blood, shed blood. All that pointed the same gospel. It's not a different gospel. What Paul say? If anybody bring a different gospel unto you, let him be accursed. It's the same. God doesn't change. That same gospel was preached unto them. Why is he even saying that? He's saying that because he's telling us, giving us this warning that we ought to fear and we don't have a different gospel than what they had. We have the same one. Although we're on the other side of the cross, that's the only difference. We look back, they looked ahead. But the same gospel, he said, let us fear. So the same gospel, now watch this now. We see certainly we have no advantage. Now, let me go here to 1 Peter chapter 8. <coughs> uh, 1 Peter chapter 8. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 8. There ain't eight chapters in 1 Peter. All right, let's look at this. And I'm going to flip over here because i got some notes in my, my Bible here. 1 Peter 1, verse 8, talking about the same gospel. Now here he said, Whom having not seen, ye love. Who's he talking about? He's talking about Christ. He said, in whom, though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Now watch this. Of which salvation the prophets. Now how did we start out Hebrews? God in sundry times and divers manner spoke to us in time past by the prophets. We done that study on the prophets a, a little bit. We didn't go into great detail about it. So here the prophets. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired. Now he said and search diligently. That word diligently of course uh, means to examine anxiously to search out. So you know as they was doing all these Old Testament rituals, if you will, that God told them to do because they pointed to Christ and He hadn't come yet, so they was under the law of that dispensation. You remember we talked about the dispensations as we started the book of Hebrews. But as they was doing all this, they was diligently seeking the Lord. He said, and they searched diligently. Who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you? So this is the Old Testament prophets. Preaching what? The same salvation. Of which salvation? They have inquired and searched diligently. Now verse 11. Searching what? Or what manner of time? Of course, searching to examine and uh, dig signify. What's this? Now as we go on down through here. Searching or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ 
which was in them did signify. That word did signify, and we'll see that in a moment. That's something we need to, uh, we'll see. Well, let me just flip back over there. In, in Hebrews chapter 9, uh, it's talking about, and we'll deal with this as we get to it. But in Hebrews 9, in verse 8, he's talking about all the things that the priest did in order in the sanctuary. But in verse number 8 of Hebrews 9, it said, The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way, who is the way? The Lord Jesus Christ. The way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest and not yet made known. While as the first tabernacle was yet standing. So the signifying, the same Spirit of God, the same gospel. See, that's what I love about the, the Word of God. It does not contradict itself. What the Word of God does is support itself. It, it's like a will. I mean, and it all just gathers strength. And it's the same gospel. It's the same message. But these prophets searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify. Talking about the Lord. When it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. He said, Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things. What which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Now watch this. Which things the angels desire to look into. Now think about that. The angels desire to swap places, if you will. That word desire, now I just wrote some of this stuff down. What the angels desire, they have a longing for. They're saying, now see, they see the finished product. They don't see, they, don't, they look past us right now. They see the finished product. We don't see our finished product. We do typology-wise as we look into the Word of God uh, because, you know, here was Jesus when He was resurrected in His glorified body. He said, it's not a spirit. Spirit has not flesh and bones. And uh, you, you saw how He walked through the walls. He'd done different things. There's a lot that tells about our body. When on the Mount of Transfiguration, when Moses and Elijah was there, Peter, James, and John knew them. They saw them. They talked with them. So, so much we could go into detail about that our glorified bodies will be. But the angels that God created now, they want to be like us. Redeemed. Watch this. They would love it. <laughs> and he said there that they desire to look into. They desire to investigate, if you will, to change places. They have a longing for. They're saying, oh, you're beautiful. You're created at the image of God. You have been redeemed by His precious blood. Oh, that I wish and I long for. Oh, if I can only swap places with you. You and I sometimes desire to swap places with the angels, don't we? They desire to swap places with us. They fully understand that Christ, for a little time, was made lower than them so we can be made better than the angels. They see the finished product. All we see is this mess, these failures, these trials, these feelings of disappointment. We battle discouragement, setbacks. Yet despite all of our battles, they desire to be like us, redeemed, washed in His precious blood. That is amazing to me. They desire to look into that basically means they wish they was redeemed with that precious blood just as well. We can't see that, folks. We got so much garbage floating in our minds, even right now, that we cannot see past what we. And I'm glad down through time, God gives us some glimpses yes. of glory. Praise God. Listen, boy, when we're going through some stuff, if God was sometimes, I love how He just unveils what we have in Him. And I tell you, we're going to have to have a new body because we can't take it. <laughs> we can't take it. There ain't no way. We can't. We got to have new eyes when we see His glory because we can't see it. It'll burn our eyeballs up. Amen. 
got to have a new body, would have a heart attack. I'm telling you, that 10, 12 inch concrete wall, if the Lord walked through that thing right now, I'd definitely be seeing him. Because I'd be dead. <laughs> Think about it now. There's a lot that we have. I have not seen, nor has it heard, neither has it in the heart of man. The things that God had pertained in the love. Well, look at verse 25 at the end of this. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So it's the same word, the same gospel. Now back in Hebrews 4, and let me get us back there here on the screen. Bear with me just a second. Hebrews 4, verse number 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So the word did not profit them. That means it did not assist them. It was not useful to them. It was not an advantage to them. Can you preach a completed gospel and over and over hear it be exposed to a complete gospel and it not profit you one bit? And the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. You can sit in this Sunday school class and you're going to hear, and I know I ain't, uh, you know, I'm not Paul and, and Paul's not me and I know it's different and just like Pastor ain't Charles and everybody's different. Mm -hmm. I'm not Randy. I'm not Terry. I'm not none of that. I'm rich. That's all I feel. <laughs> and uh, I ain't a Lord by name, but that's it. But uh, everybody's got the different style. But I can assure you one thing. We'll be in this book, in this class. That's right. Amen. And we'll teach the Word of God. And we'll dissect it. And we'll dig. Now, is it possible for you to sit in here week after week Sit up there in that sanctuary week after week, exposed to a completed gospel, and it not profit you one bit. Yes, it's possible. That's what we need to fear. That's why he let out. Let us therefore fear. Why? Watch this. Not being mixed with faith, it did not profit them at all. The same gospel was preached unto them. The same thing, we just read it. In 1 Peter, the same gospel was preached, but it didn't profit them. Not being mixed with faith. Now, that word mixed means to unite. Just ladies, it's just as you make a cake. you got to put eggs. you got to put some milk in there. you got to put a little oil. Yes, I bake a cake a time or two. I guess you can tell. But that's how you do it. You mix it all up. Now, it don't look good coming in, that, in all that bowl. And my goodness, right here ain't going to do nothing. <laughs> Who wants to eat this? Boy, when that heat gets on it, and it starts to rise, and it gets done, you stick that toothpick in. It comes out clean. Pull it out of it. Amen? It's ready to eat. The same thing, the mix, means to unite. To unite one thing to another for the completion of a thing. For the Word of God to be what it is supposed to be for you and I, the necessary ingredient to complete the process is our faith. No wonder the same writer in Hebrews now, he dedicated an entire chapter to what? Faith. What does it say in Hebrews 11 verse 6? Without faith it is impossible to please God. Impossible. Faith is necessary. Faith is the bonding agent that pulls the Word of God and you together. Now, there's some scriptures, and, and we just ain't going to have time to deal with it, but I just want to uh, look at a, a few of them. Romans 12, 3. Let's flip back here, and let's look at that scripture. Now, faith is what he's talking about here. In Romans chapter 12. Romans 12, of course, you know verse 1 and 2. Uh, talks about, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. But we offer and leave off there. He says, Be not conformed to this world, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
For I say through grace given to me to every man that is among you, not to think himself more highly than they ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Every created being from Saddam Hussein, Osama bin Laden, Adolf Hitler, Rich Pike, doesn't matter. Every man has been dealt a measure of faith. That same measure in Romans chapter 1, you'll see that God has speak, clearly seen the things of him that cannot be seen, or who you can't see, are clearly seen through the creation. God has a way of speaking through his creation to every man. How does he do that? He gives every man a measure of faith. See, I don't believe there'll be a person alive that God hadn't spoke, or a person in hell that God hadn't spoken to them and showed them Jesus Christ. I just don't believe it. Now, our, our word tells us to go and share, but I believe even when there ain't a person there to speak to them, God speaks through His creation through the measure of faith given to every man. Now, I'm just going to look at this verse in Ephesians 4 and we'll be done in verse number 7. Now, this is not talking about faith, but it's talking about grace. But in every one of us is giving. Every one of us is giving grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. How are you going to measure the gift of Christ? God give His best, His only Son. He is the great volunteer. He is the one that come down and said, I'll go. I'll do that will, oh God. So every one of us is given. There it is. Everything we got is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. It's given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. You look up that word measure, and it means a measuring stick, a tape measure, a, a ruler, a gauge, something to go by. My goodness. Every man is given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Father, I come into your presence this morning, God. Thank you, Lord, for your precious, unspeakable gift. God, we ought to fear, Lord, lest a promise being left to us because of our unbelief. Lord, the same gospel preached unto them as unto us. We're no different. We're just as accountable as they are. We have the same word of God. We have the same faith, the measure given to all men. Now, God, no doubt you say that we are without excuse. We are. You said that in your word, it's impossible for you to lie. That God be true and every man a liar. Now, Lord, would you help us to believe you for all that you have for our lives? Thank you that we have something even the angel desire to look into. God, would you let us know we're fearfully and wonderfully made? You have a plan, you have a purpose, you have a calling for our life. Help us to do it now. Thank you for these that's come. Would you bless them? Bless us as we go into this worship hour. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for being here this morning.